Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today, we're with Dave Nyhart, and in this video, he's going to introduce you to some facts about our state fish, the brook trout. Thanks, Cody. As Cody mentioned, what we're looking at here today is the brook trout, and it is our state fish. Um, it's actually in the, in the Samonidae family, and it is the only stream-dwelling trout native to Pennsylvania. Um, it can be referred to as many different names. Some people call it the speckled trout, hemlock trout, mountain trout, uh, or even more commonly, just the brookie. Brook trout are, are native to northeastern United States, the Great Lakes region, all the way down the Appalachian Mountains into, into Georgia. They're not found there everywhere now. now obviously, over time, through settlement, through, um, the settlement uh, just other human activities have really encroached upon some of their native range, such things as um, mining, uh, development, those type of things have really, and deforestation, uh, have really impacted on where you're, you're likely to find brook trout these days. As far as Pennsylvania goes, um, they're spread, you'll find them in, in uh, a lot of areas, most likely the uh, Laurel Highlands areas, north central PA and out in the Poconos. So areas where you have uh, elevation, some of our biggest tracts of public, public land where human activity is minimal. So looking at the characteristics of them, you can see here overall appearance of a brook trout is they're, they're uh, olive greenish color overall on their sides. You can see on the back you have these worm-like patterns, vermiculations. Very common trait of what you would expect to see on a brook trout. If you look down at the fins, look at the fins, you can see that the, typically the fins are red in color and they have a real strong white leading edge followed by a black edge on the fins. You can see on the sides another unique characteristic to brook trout is the very distinct red dots uh, surrounded by a very bright blue orange halo. Those are all very very good physical characteristics when you're looking to identify a brook trout. Um, very beautiful fish in my opinion probably the, the most beautiful uh, game fish that we have in Pennsylvania. So Typically, where we find these things at uh, is a setting like this. We're, we're in a pristine area, very cold water. These are a cold water species and obviously require cold water. They like, they, they do their best, um, obviously in cold water, usually in, in ranges anywhere from 50 to 60 degrees is their optimal uh, thermal temperature to be found in. They can survive in warmer temperatures, but once you start getting in 68, 70 degrees, it's less optimal for them. As you approach that 70 degree and up to 72, 74 degrees, it really becomes lethal to them. So they truly require cold water uh, to, to, to thrive. A little bit about their um, life history. You can see here, uh, we have a couple different age classes of fish. For the most part, brook trout in Pennsylvania are very short lived. Typically, if you get a brook trout that's five years old, that, that's fairly old for brook trout. Um, so you can see here a couple of different age classes. We have an adult here. This is probably a nine, 10 inch fish, beautiful looking fish. Again, this fish is somewhere between five and six years old. All the way down to these little guys you can see here in the corner. This is what we would call a young of the year. So this fish was born this spring. Typically this would occur sometime around Valentine's Day. You can see it's just a little guy, probably about three, inches in length. So these fish typically start to spawn sometime in late September all the way through November uh, and how that happens is the female will pick out the spawning location which typically occurs uh, in, in areas where you have suitable substrate kind of like a small pea gravel type substrate. These are usually found at the tail end of a pool or run or in some cases at like a spring upwelling where you have a consistent um, movement of cold oxygenated water. So the female will come in, make the red, uh, lay her eggs, the males will come in, and when it's all over with, the female will then cover the nest back up substrate, and pretty much that's it. Uh, there's no other parental care after that once the uh, red is complete. And depending on temperature and, and um, dissolved ox oxygen levels, will determine how long those eggs will incubate for. Typically, it's around 100 days under temperatures of about 40, 40 degrees. Um, so that being said, 
spawn in the fall, they'll hatch out in the springtime. And when they, they hatch out, the sac fry, uh, in, in progress from there, they're typically about an inch in length. Brook trout are a very good indicator of good water quality. Uh, as mentioned before, they're often found in areas that we would consider pristine. Uh, they require cold water, good habitat, things that you typically find in your more remote portion areas of the state. Thank you very much, Dave. Now, you mentioned that we have some native brook trout here. Would you mind sort of comparing, for everyone watching, what the difference is between a wild trout versus a native trout? Yeah, so the term wild simply uh, describes a fish that was naturalized, it was born in a stream. Uh, so that's why we have wild brown trout, wild uh, rainbow trout as well. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fish that was born and raised in the stream. Native, uh, in this case, uh, yeah, as mentioned before, the only fish that's native, which uh, originally originated here, is brook trout. Uh, so it can, it's the only trout that you can refer to as a native fish that's found in the streams of Pennsylvania. Uh, 